For more information on my programs, please visit masajadi.com. That's M A S S A J A D Y.com. Hi, this is Masajadi. Welcome to my podcast, Exponential Intelligence. As part of our Ascendance series, this is episode 140 Ascendance, Power and Responsibility. Our special guest tonight is Amit. He was on Podcast 89. His story was so inspiring that it ranked the most popular episode of Exponential Intelligence. However, right after the interview, his life took an unexpected turn into the darkness. His journey out of the darkness is an extraordinary lesson on Exponential Intelligence. He returns today to tell us all about it. Now, his story was so intriguing uh, that I wanted to capture that organic essence on recording for your benefit. So, as a result, uh, we recorded this podcast impromptu with available recording equipment. So, it may lack in sound quality, but, you know, it's high octane in wisdom and experience. Let's jump right in, and you'll soon see what I mean. I'm just going to hand it over off uh, to Amit. Amit, welcome. It's, it's so nice seeing you here. And I... I actually understood that you flew here from um, here in Oslo recording this. You flew here uh, out of the blue. Yes, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, well, that, that's an indication of how my life is now. Is um, you know, I flew out here. I decided to come to Oslo on Friday at three o'clock UK time. Mm-hmm. I was on a flight at seven o'clock, and here. And yeah, I, that's how I, that's how things go for me right now. It's literally in the moment, how I feel, how I'm going. Um, I can't remember. I, I have to be honest. I have not listened to the podcast that we did um, at 89. I haven't listened to it afterwards. And I think that was unconscious on my part to not do that. Um, but I do remember having that podcast and I do remember the feelings I had. It feels like a lifetime ago because there's been so much that's happened since then. So how long has it actually been since the last podcast? Because So well, how long have you known me? I've known you since, so I had my first IGH with you in September 2016. So not long? No, not long at all. That was one IGH, but I didn't really ramp up my IGHs or interaction with you until November 2016 when you right. came to... Uh, Birmingham in the UK. And then four months after, I think, we did a podcast together. Yes. Your life had turned around so amazingly fast. Yes. Okay. So, and that's when we did the podcast again. It was so amazingly fast. And, and so that brings us to days or what happened after the podcast or say after what happened after the podcast. Yes. All right. So do you want to just start your story from there? <laughs> okay. So, um, <clears throat> When I did the podcast with you, everything felt yummy, great, amazing on cloud nine. Oh my God, how has this happened? It's so fast. And that did continue. I think we did that in February. Uh, that continued for a couple of months afterwards. You know, I was still riding on that particular crest, um, really enjoying life, really seeing it in a different way. And I remember saying to you at the time, I do remember one thing I was saying is all I wanted to be was happy. And then I realized, you know, that that's what I was. Um, but then things really did change. Um, I mean, the, and to me during that period of time, what I didn't realize at the time was my kind of higher consciousness went and, you know, kind of paved the way for me to ascend. And by that, I mean, you know, that, that's, that's been my whole aim all the way through this is to get to higher plane, higher consciousness, to see the world in a different way, to see myself, to understand who I truly am. Um, and I thought that's kind of where I was in February of when I did the podcast with you. And in a way I was, so my higher consciousness was doing that all the way through. What it forgot to do was take the rest of me with it. Yeah. Um, and what do I mean by that? Effectively, you know, I was sitting in this plane, in this body, in this consciousness, feeling great because that's what my highest consciousness was feeling. But here I was still keeping a whole load of past um, kind of, uh, you know, things on me. I still hadn't really cleared what I needed to clear on a physical body plane. And I still hadn't gone through the experiences that I really needed to, to fully ascend wholly, completely, totally and utterly with my highest consciousness. And so, so in short, you had separated your physical identity between that higher consciousness or just basically shut your physical identity off, physical experience off, and you were living on cloud nine. A lot of people do that. Yeah. And, and I 
now know that's because my spirit, that's my, because my highest consciousness, I call it spirit, highest consciousness. People have different labels for it. But I knew that that is the, the reason for that is that's how my spirit, my higher consciousness knew I could do it the fastest way for me, for me personally, everybody's different. Uh, and that's what I've asked for. All I've asked for is for a long time is to ascend, to get higher, to get higher consciousness. When I said happy, I didn't really mean happy because uh, happy you can be in five minutes, right? And then, and then it stops. I wanted to be aware. I wanted to be awake. I wanted to really have the life and manifest the life that I really wanted. That's what I've asked for. That's what I've always asked for. Whether I consciously knew it or not, that is that is what I've been asking for. The um, deliciousness of life. The deliciousness, I got a taste of it when you I was speaking to you in February. Yes. So that my spirit was, te- my high consciousness is teasing me. I've got my, my spirit has a really, really big sense of humor. Yeah. Likes to tease me, <laughs> likes to dangle stuff right in front of me and then go, nope, not yet. You have yeah. to do some work to get there. Yeah. And that's what I had to do. So let me get to, I I'm at May at the moment. May was the key kind of month for me last year uh, where effectively everything changed. You know, physically, I was energetically low. You know, I had a whole lot of detox, a whole lot of things were processing out of me. And then I went through like three months of continually dying. Um, and I can say that as a, it, it, you know. Wait, wait, wait. So, so explain detox or because some people go, well, we go through detox. And detox is different for everybody. Mm, yeah. But what happened to you, like, before you had the dying experience, and then explain the dying. Experience. So, so I actually, de- I actually, my, when I detox, detox for me is effectively when things are processing out and I'm letting go. Um, only I can, only I can really uh, regulate what my detox is going to be because it's how quickly I like to let go of it. Unfortunately, I let go of everything that I need to let go of. Unfortunately, it took a little bit of time for me to register that that was my responsibility. And actually, I had the power to let go of things quicker if I just kind of sat with things, let it process, let it come through and kind of and kind of let leave, leave the body. I found a lot of my past patterns would become more intense before they left my body and before they left my consciousness. And that's what I term detox. It's that whole period of letting go of everything that I need to let go of to kind of fully ascend and move forward in life. Um, And I resisted it. And because I resisted it, it became more painful. Because it became more painful, I resisted it even more. And then I've almost built up another another pattern with myself to detox. And when it it suddenly clicked in at some point, it clicked in at some point that I had that power to let go more. And so that's what I was going, this, I'm actually reliving this now while I'm speaking to you. It's, it, this is what I was going through to May to June. And so then I went, right, I, I've got it now. I know how to let go. But then, you know, spirit gave me about a week to have a nice time, right? Dangled that carrot in front of me and said, okay, you're ready for the next rung. And this is when I started, I would say, having these dying experiences. Um, I don't know how many I had. I know there were quite a few. I also know that you didn't tell me how many I had during the t- period I was going through it. Yeah. And I know there was a reason for that. Nor was I going to tell you how many more you were going to have. A hundred percent. So every time I spoke to you and I, I get it now, um, I understand why you say the things that you do say, because there are some things that you just don't need to hear at that point. Mm-hmm. And there are things that you say in the moment that um, gets you on the path that you need to get on. And it's some things I need to hear as well. So you've been all of those kind of versions all the way through that period of time. But uh, um, dying is an interesting experience, as you well know. I didn't do it the same way as you. You had actual physical near di- near death experiences. Right. I was like literally dying and then I would die again and then I would die again. And all I felt were, around that was that was the quickest way my highest consciousness, my spirit said, I could get rid of all of the disgustingness, all of the the things that I need to get rid of because I've asked for this. This is all because I've asked for it. It's not because it was ordained or somebody said to do it to me. You know, I've asked for it. So I ask, I got what I asked for and I asked for it the quickest way that I could handle. And so in a way I look back and go, well, wow, that's a real strength to be able to go through that. But I was building strength as I was going along. I don't even really fully understand how many or the depths of what I I did during that period of time or what I was doing. Okay, so just to clarify, so why would you 
say that you were dying? Oh, <laughs> because it felt like I was dying. I mean, okay. I don't, I can't really, well, unless you, somebody's was gone. It like you wanted to die or you just felt like you were dying? It was both. Okay. So, so I would, I've never, even no matter how awful I felt about life, the one thing I can honestly say is I've always had this innate strength. I might say it in the moment. Oh, I, well, I don't want to be here. You know, that kind of throwing my toys out the pram. I might say that. I, I never really mean it. I don't want to die. I don't want to be off this plane. But, I've never felt fully part of this world while I was growing up. Mm -hmm. But I've never felt like I wanted to die. I felt like I was dying during that period. I felt like the only way I could get rid of the pain was to die. Um, but then... I'll come back to underneath it all. I knew I wasn't going to die. I knew yeah. I wasn't going to leave. I knew I didn't want to leave, but I went through the whole experience of feeling it. So it's really hard to explain unless you've actually gone through it to have that duality of absolutely knowing fundamentally that you're going to be here doing and getting through all of this and have that innate strength. And on the other hand, experiencing every single emotion feeling of dying at everything that you could possibly imagine getting thrown to you doing it once and then doing it again and then doing it again and then doing it again i mean there was no let up and i looked at it and i i i was very in a pity mode obviously right i was like why is this happening to me what is going on what happened to february <laughs> you know what i was in yummy mode in february what happened then you know i can't even feel those emotions i can't feel those feelings i'm in this dark kind of death space and there's no let up. And I remember speaking to you and you're like, you know, I, I actually sensed at the time there was more coming, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to accept that. Right. Cause right. you don't want right. to, right. Of course you never do. And it happened for a long time. I remember I did the triathlon. So first time in my life, it was a really big thing for me to do. Mm -hmm. It was the proper triathlon, the full, full length. And I remember I got knocked off my bike uh, during that, moment mm. right it was never meant to happen that way in my eyes but i got knocked off and i remember feeling that that wasn't actually anything to do with chance or luck or anything that no, was no. to do with some whilst one last chance that some something had against me and i had to feel that concussion i had concussion after it but i still completed that triathlon so i had to do that physically here what? to do it on higher consciousness but i was carrying all this baggage all this letting go but I always knew that it was for a bigger purpose. It was to right. cl get right. clean quicker. Um, so let me explain the, the mechanics or the science. Yes, please on, do. <laughs> I still so, don't get it, boss. <laughs> so on why you would feel that way, have that yummy feeling, mm -hmm. and then go downhill, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So, for, well, for you specifically, and then for a lot of people listening, you know, you, you would go, oh, this is, this is fantastic. This is great. You know, you ascend to a higher level, but like you said, you forgot, say, the consciousness consciousness of life. Because mm. at that yummy space that you were in, you're in your spirit body. So you'd like to tend to go ahead in time. Does that make sense? Yes. You've always been like that, you know? And most business people do because they always want to know what's ahead. But again, most business people, they forget that there's time that dragged time. Right. So, yeah. so, so, so that yummy feeling was also laced with distortion because basically you wanted to get away from your current life or your rendition of physical life here. Right. Because most people want to escape. And that's for you was, it was God, God, I feel great. I want to be here. But, you know, your reality pulls you down. Your body pulls mm -hmm. you down like an anchor. It's like, God, well, what am I, what are you going to do with this thing here? You know, your body. So, so that's that yummy feeling. And then you finally start to realize it's like the way exponential intelligence works and the way I help guide you is that, uh, and again, this is the way monks do it, religious people do it, or anybody who's had those, say, spiritual experiences, what they do is they leave their body behind. Mm. They can only travel to that level that you travel to in, what, three, four months. You know, most monks would go, or most Buddhist type individuals or individuals of that nature, they they travel that high in like years and decades. It takes them that long. You did it in a very short time. Uh, and that was that beyond expectation, right? So to travel beyond that, you have to take, say, the idea or the rendition of your body with. Yes. So as you come back into yourself, you start to see how heavy reality really is. 
and then all the darkness and all the distortions. So for you, again, you say disconnected, you get to see how grand it should be all the time. Yes. You come back down and then now you have a reference point on what it's supposed to be, how you're supposed to feel. And then it's like all this crap that's still yes. laced around you, although you had a, you know, a fantastic time, a lot better than before. So once you know that reference point, it's like, okay, how's, what's the fastest possible way for me to get rid of all these filters and all this baggage that we have? Mm. Does that make sense? It to makes you? total sense. So the fastest way for you to do it, and again, you're very sharp, um, is that you have a dying experience where you go, okay, let me shed this layer of identity, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You, and then it's a dying experience because that like literally slips away. And when I was working on you at the time, it's like, oh, I mean, I see you stronger and brighter, but on the flip side, you see yourself like, oh my God, what the hell just happened? Like <laughs> something just wrung me out. Yeah. And it did because, well, that was your pattern that had, you know, soaked into you so strong, just like getting leached out of you. Yeah. And then, well, you would, you, so you probably had like three or four, let's say, um, scheduled near deaths. Does that make sense? Scheduled, yeah. Scheduled by <laughs> yeah. your spirit, not me or anything else. So it's just like layers that just like, and you would release like thick layers of identity. Yeah. Right. All at the same time. It's really a great way to do it if you want to really compact it. Most people, I don't think they could have handled it what you went through, but you know, you're strong, you're tough. You just want to do it really in a short period of time so you can move on. Yes. Right? So uh, a lot of pe other people, I think would have gotten really distorted and sick. It, they would have taken a long time to recover. So, so you did it the proper way. Uh, anyway, you lose your identity. Again, it's a death. Yes. Your identity slipping away. Most people won't go to those depths. Right. They just won't release. Cause when you're in that space of dying, you don't want to die. Although in the back of your mind, it's like, it's okay. It's okay. Right. You, it's like, God, I might die, you know, because it is a real experience. It's not like created or it's not fake. It's not like a Hollywood movie set. Yeah. You, you literally might like cross over. Right. Yes. If everything wasn't perfect. So, so again, three or four times you release like years or decades or lifetimes of crap. And then you're on your path. Yes. So I remember when I was in that death space period that I couldn't even leave my flat. And actually, it's interesting because I was working at the time, but I was enabled or allowed to just work from home during that time. And it was a good job, really, because I, I just didn't leave my bed. I didn't want to get out. I didn't want to see the world. The only thing that I was willing to do was actually get either on meditations with you or on IGHs. And I don't, I, like, I don't mean that in terms of, oh, that was going to save me or anything. But that was the only thing I was drawn to. Anything else was just like, I just need to sit here. And I always feel it when I'm feeling kind of that detox. I feel it in the head mostly. It's the dredgingness. That's how I experience it. And then the aches and pains in my body. But actually sitting there depressed. I have those connotations with my flat even now. I mean, I, I actually feel like I will move out of that place because it just holds those like, memories. And, and it has to because I also feel like I need to be out of that flat as well. Of in course, the way. it's the new you. 100%. But it's where I died three or four times now, there I found out, right? So, of course, I don't want to be there because it's like my deathbed, the deathbed for the old Amit times three or four times. Um, and, and unfortunately, that's now what the connotation I have with it. But effectively, I was so depressed. It was so down. It was just like, no one can help you. But you have to be in that mode to take responsibility. It's like when you're at the lowest point ever, Right, you can either go right. I can give up and I can just stay low here, or you can pick yourself up and move forward. And it's not easy. It's not simple. It's not a flick of the moment or like a click of the thing that you can just literally flip into that mode and go. Okay, now I've got it. I'm owning it now. No, no, no. It's like I had to build. I had to like dig myself out of it. And I remember at that point, I come back to that was a point where 
um, you said you were giving me the responsibility and you kind of backed off a bit and said, you've got to take responsibility. And you were very keen not to tell me what was going on because A, it would freak me out. Of course it would. Um, but B, more importantly, I have this thing where I change things. You know, if I get told something, I like to change it. It's just the way I am. I don't like to, I don't like to know. I would always think I want to know the outcome and actually I don't. I just want to change it. So you didn't tell me that. And so I didn't have any answers either, which was another lesson for me because I'm always searching for, I was always searching for answers and actually don't need to know it. I, I just need you to get through to it. It's a whole part of letting go, which is what I wasn't doing. Well, how can I, how can you find yourself if you're told who you are? You, the whole thing is finding yourself. Yes. The keyword is yourself, not having somebody else tell you this is who you are. Yes, right? exactly. And, the mind only knows so much. The mind gets in the way. Exactly. So, so the mind can only go so far. Exactly. It can't really, really encompass, understand who you really are because it doesn't know who you really are. It's not got that ability. It's the innate sense, the innate knowing, the innate kind of well-knowing being. That's all I know. I know. That's, that's all I can say. If somebody asks me who I am, I, I, I'm not going to articulate it to you. I just know who I am. Of course. Right, I don't need to tell anybody else. I just know it. You can see right. it in my persona. You can see it how I sit down now. You can see where I am. But at that time, I didn't know who the hell I was. I was right. like five different amits coming out at once, which were all of the personas. And uh, so, if I give you, say, assurance, yeah, right. If I gave you, oh, this is what's going to happen to you. Would you think you you would have learned? I, I actually take one step back. I wouldn't have believed you. Because, because remember, I was in victim mode, right? So I would exactly. have said, go, well, you're saying that, but it's not really true. Because how could that be true? I don't believe it. Mm. Yeah. But that wasn't because you said it. It wasn't because it would have been if anybody told me, mm. right? Because I wanted to, because it's what you just said there. Ultimately, I wanted to find out for myself who I really That's was. Yeah. Whether I say, you tell me the answer, you tell me the answer, you tell me the answer. Ultimately, I know who I am. I know what I'm like. I do. I want to find out myself. It's how I've always been. Right. It's how most people are, whether they know it or not, right? But uh, if you had told me the answer, it would have been too easy for me. And then I would have wanted to change it who I really was. So I do. Uh, well, so I would a have lot found people, a different me. Well, they, they get so insecure, so and they, confused. you know, and they, especially when you're like dying. <laughs> yes. You know, you want to reach out, and and then you go, well, why isn't Moss helping me? You know. Yes. And why is it? Well, the best way to help you, and I went through this too, like. When I was trying to connect it, this is like straight pure source, you know, when I was going through the process and I'm going, okay, pure source have been with me all along and gave me these great ideas, concepts, uh, this knowledge, and now I really need it. I, you know, I went through a couple of say, death scenarios and like losing my mind. And I, it's like, pure source, can you help me? And the answer is just like, no. Yeah. And I'm going, what the hell? Uh. I yeah. got this far, <laughs> yeah. and now it's like you're backing out. Yeah. It's like, please, please help me. And it's like, no. It's like, and literally, I would get this booming, thunderous, god type sound. Like, no. I mean, pure source has, to me, and anyway, yeah, a comic side. Yeah, you did that on the phone <laughs> to me. No. Oh, did I? Yeah, you oh. did. Well, that's you where I came did from. Do that as well. I, now I know where it's come from. But I'm a pure source. Thanks. Yeah, for pure exactly. <laughs> So, <laughs> but you know, and then I got like, you get down to your knees, you know, it's like, please, please, right? Because there's exactly nowhere to go. For me, there was nowhere to go. There was no like exponential intelligence or anything like this or anybody. It's like, please, please, please. It's like, and it's like, well, you know, I gave you all the tools that you need. It's right in front of you. You know, yes. all you have to do is like use it. If I can't interfere with that, it yes. wouldn't be beneficial for you. And it's against free will. Yes. Right? Yes. So when it, when it, I, it, that came into me, it's like, oh shit! Everything's right in front of me. And then you pick it up, right? You get back on your feet and you go, gosh, everything's inside me. You just go forward. Yes. Right. And yeah. that's where you go, wow. You know, because once you take that first step, everything falls into place. Isn't that, that amazing? And that's that. So, I'm. That's a really key thing for me. Yeah. It's exactly the same. But actually, it, there was a vision that I had. I don't normally have visions. I don't mm -hmm. see things in that way. I just, I just I innately yeah. know. 
but I did have a vision of you like in this way, but it was literally, I was on a, um, a road, there's like a path and there was nothing there in front of you. And there was nothing there behind me. But originally there was a whole lot of crap behind me and a whole lot of crap in front of me. And this is oh, one wow. road, right? And I can't see anything when there's crap there behind me. I miss you. This is how I see you now. It's like you helped. If I look around now, you've helped me clear the past. It's yeah. Like everything in my past is clear. You've yeah. helped me do that. You're like the, you know, very nice road sweeper. You cleared everything. <laughs> the garbage away. man. You got the trash out of the way and yes. you got your hands dirty and helped me and you showed me how to do it. Right. Then in front of me, you know, I don't need to look at the past anymore. That's happened. No. I don't need to do that. It's clear. I look in front of me. I can't see the path because there's still stuff there. I haven't cleared right. that away. You help me clear that up too. So you help me clear the front. You help me clear the back. I can now see all of the paths that I can possibly do. But I have to walk it. Right. And that was the key thing that I, I really right. got at that point right. was, oh, well, what do I do now? I, I, it's clear for me. No, I have to walk it. I have you to have take to the walk. step. I have to actually. But by the way, I can choose that path, that path, that path. And even on those paths, I have different paths. But right. it's still one path, if you see what I mean. But I have to walk it. I have to speak my truth. I have to do right. it. And that's not to say you can't guide me. That's not no, to say you not. can't give me some advice. But that's beside me now, or even just observing me rather than helping. being there. Yeah. Right. You help me clear it. You help me show it that way. You help right. me do the things I couldn't. I wouldn't have been able to do here on this plane. That's why we met, right? But I had to choose where I was going forward. And I decided to run, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't even decide to take the first step. I decided I want to run and do this, right? Mm -hmm. why, 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 take, why wait all this time and take steps? I'm going to run for it. But that was my choice, right? Right. You didn't push me. You didn't go, you didn't like kind of say skip. You didn't say hop. You said, right, I've cleared the way for you. You do it. Okay, let me clarify one little thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I help you. You're on your path. Um, I cleared your past for you. Yes. Right? And I showed you how to clear what's in front of you. Yes. Right. So I helped you clear it up. So it's like this is how you do it. And then you start walking that path on a clear path. Yes. And then you see more garbage. But I'm not going to do it for you anymore. Right. Does that make sense to yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. So that's to. where you kind of went downhill again. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, Moss is not here. What yeah. the hell? It's like there's garbage he here. Every Thursday, to the trash. Where <laughs> is he? Where is he? <laughs> where well, is, he? is he here on Friday? Is it a holiday? Holiday. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like now. It's like okay, you gotta clean that garbage up. Yeah. No. Exactly. And the nice thing about cleaning up your own garbage, do you notice that you make less garbage? Well, yeah, you don't want any you garbage. You don't want to anymore. clean it up because exactly. nobody else is cleaning I it up for you. I want to recycle it. It's a recyclable garbage now for me. So it's like goes into the kind of exactly. get growth. Yeah, and you 100%. get more efficient again because yeah. nobody else is doing it for no. you and you learn really quick yeah. that way. And I like to so run. So that's the only correction. There. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I meant right? initially, I meant that of initial course. step had to be taken by me. Of and course, exactly. But yeah, yeah I, I don't, I, and I wouldn't expect you to clear my garbage anymore. Why would you get your hands dirty well, in my garbage? a lot of people garbage? do, sweetie. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I know that. You sweetie. Yeah, but anyway, it's all right, honey. Thanks, honey. This is this is a throwback to our original podcast. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so you're not but, coming any Thursdays anymore? No, basically. not no more. You can do it. <laughs> no. No, so I, I I don't expect that anymore, and I did have an expectation no, no, that you, you could do it, and I think most people right. do. Most uh, people do, and yeah. more, and then that's where people get mad at me. It's like, God, Moss took me this far. Where the hell is he? Yeah, isn't he going to lead me the rest way? It's like, yeah. no, yeah. I'm not. I'll be there if you need help. You know, call me. Yes. Again, I'll be there, but it's not because I'm mean. You know, I do this to my kids. Yeah. You know, I heard a story from Richard Branson, and this is really like way out there. So when Richard Branson, and that's in one of his stories, one of his books. He was four. His mother would just drop him off somewhere, 10 miles away. It's like, now you get back home wow. at four. Wow. Okay. I'm not that mean. Okay. Yeah. You were I mean, that only worked for Richard Branson. Yeah. I started at four and a half, but I mean, that would work for Richard Branson because he had, you know, the wherewithal to do it. But for most kids, they'd get, they'd get lost and die. Yes. So it worked for him, right? Cause that's what he needed. 
So, so again, any successful individual, they've learned how to pick up yes. right, their essence, pick up their power and use it properly and get that crap out of the way and then just start steaming forward. Right? It's the same way. You can ask any successful individual. Nobody has ever had to do it for them, although they had help. Hmm. And then once they propel forward, they're on their own. They do it themselves. Exactly. And it's the empowering way to do it. Because if yeah. it's what we come back to, what we said earlier, if somebody's done it for you, then where you, where's the lesson in that way? How are you yeah, going to no, know? There's no pride in it. That's what happened in February. Was, it wasn't done for me, but it was more guided through. Of course. And I was like, okay, this is great. I'm loving this. But mm -hmm. actually, left to my own devices, I didn't know what to do. Right. You know, I had to be re-shown. I had to understand it. I had to really get to know who I was. And then I had right. to work out what was, then I had to learn how other people did it and realize it wasn't the way I should be doing it because my spirit's different from everybody else's. Everybody's spirit's different. Everybody's right. higher consciousness is different. So I had to go through all of that experience in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have changed it anyway. But my God, and now I look back at what I thought and how I thought things should be and the world was me and all that victim thing. I can't even touch right. that anymore. It doesn't feel, it feels very unfamiliar. Right. But I know it because I, I, I went through it, but it doesn't feel like anything that I am now. Um, but yeah, that's the, that was the, the, the thing that you kind of propped up and kind of almost showed the mirror to my face and said, right. well, the mirror is you. Right. It's not Max. Yeah, exactly. You know? Wonderful. Yeah, and that's the key thing. And I, I think that's really important because it you would very rarely do people get that in the moment because they don't because right. they're in their own funk. Well, there's so in so much. Sometimes you know they get so hopeless. Yeah, because they're so helpless. Yeah, but if anybody else helps you, they're helping you to balance, not you. Yes. So once they pull away, right, just yes. like people do. You get off balance, so you have to learn to be balanced. Yeah. And it's really the safest environment because I'm always there. Yes, 100%. Right? But and, you have to do it on your own. And this year, this year just gone, uh, you know, um, in 2018, I took responsibility for me. I had less IGHs. I had less interaction exactly. with for a period of time. But that was self-imposed because I knew I needed, on a certain level, I knew I needed to do it. Exactly. And then when I reconnected with you, it was on a different, it was on mm -hmm. a different level. It was a different, it's of like, course. I see you, you see me. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about it because it's almost like, oh, well, I couldn't have done that had I just continued through. I had to take responsibility right, for myself. Exactly. I had to learn it my own way. I almost had to guide myself through right. it. And then I come back and go, but I, I still need some guidance at right. times, but it's not in the same way. Guidance. It's just like, it's like a, it's like a here and there, but right. it's almost like, Get what you're saying. Right. I understand it now. And that's why I don't give you all the answers, all the things that you want, because it just slows you. Huh? Well, yeah. It just totally slows you. But people procrastinate on every word you're saying sometimes. It's like, but he said it that way, and he said that word, and all of this. And I'm like, I remember even listening <laughs> to people, to certain people oh, saying really? that, and I'm like, oh, I don't think he meant it that no, way. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, that's just your interpretation. Yeah, because words of get it. distorted. Hundred yeah. percent. And everybody has a different. You know, they use a label for different things. You know, mm -hmm. if I say I'm upset, I might be mildly upset, but somebody might mean they're going to tear their hair out. So yeah, you know, it just depends on your experience. But I remember people kind of going, "Why did you say that? Why is that happening? Why is this going on?" This. Yeah, uh, and then it turns into a religion. Yes. That's how religions, distortions, you know what I mean? It's, That's another it's, podcast. Is that what Jesus meant? It's like, no. Uh, yeah. Is that what, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, Steve Jobs meant? It's like, mm, uh, probably not. No, that's what you yeah. want it to mean, but that's yeah, not what it really right. means. Yeah, so one thing I remember about that period, actually looking back at it now, is that that was the start. So pre prior to this, every time I spoke to you, Mas, it was very guidance based. It was, you know, showing me the way. It was, you know, kind of almost you. You were in the protective mode, but this was the time. Actually, the time where I believed when I was in that moment. Oh gosh, I really need your guidance, and I really need all of that, and protect me and save me. Um, you were like, no, you need to be responsible now, and I, and and that that was what really jolted me into kind of place because I had. At that time, I was running a pattern of being kind of childlike, you know, kind of throwing my toys out the pram. And I fully realized that. And I did at the time. But um, 
you know, I was like, but, but you can't do that. You need to help me and save me. Or like, you need to do that. And I had that in my head. You need to. And I was like, and now I look back at it and I'm like, why would I ever say that? Why, why would I need that? Of course, it's my responsibility. I've asked for it. You showed me the way. It's my crap. You know, I need to clear it myself. And I can say that now. Obviously, I wasn't saying that at the time. I was cursing everything and everyone. Um, I was cursing everything for about my life. I was like, woe is me. Um, and I was. I was throwing the toys out the problem. And I remember one particular IGH, and you said, what are you doing? Like, you just went, what are you doing? You haven't had it as bad as a lot of people. You didn't, I don't think you really meant this at the time. I hope you didn't. Um, but I, 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 effectively, you really jolted me out of my own sink. And you said, look, I've had all these near deaths. I went through all of this stuff myself. I'm it. You know, if I can do it, why can't you do it? You're just doing through, going through this at the moment. It's nothing. Go through it. Get it done. Come on. And it wasn't, I don't believe you thought that, but it was the words I needed to hear to take responsibility for my own actions. And by God, did I do it. I remember that. I remember that IGH. It was an open one as well. So it added, it added even more clout to it from my perspective. It wasn't like you said it privately and I didn't need it. And I, I wouldn't have reacted the way I did to it was positively had it been a private IGH it was a very open one I needed to be called out on it and I I was and I'm I am forever thankful for that because that really jolted me into responsibility mode so what happened after that was yeah it was still painful yes I still would you know had some IGHs with you and yes I still needed some guidance but it was it was then taken into account well well how do I do that how do I take that step myself how do I get it forward how do I sit with it what what can I do to to help myself through that period? And then it got it did get easier. I mean, after that, after the third or fourth near death, it got easier because last the end of last year was was you know was starting to turn a corner, and then the beginning of this year things changed again. My spirit goes. So, wait a second. so, so you say third or fourth near death. So let's put a time factor. So one month. One month. Oh my god! No, it was. Uh, oh, I would say from July till. October, I would say that I, I, I was in Canada as well for work at that period of time. That's why I remember it. And I do remember my time in Canada just being quite painful all the way through it. And I was working at the time. So I am actually looking back, not quite sure how I did do it, uh, but work was painful too. So it might have been all him to find into one. Um, so yeah, we get to October. I, I can't really remember much about October, November, December. I, I, it was it, they were okay months. Um, the real s- next turning point, higher consciousness, spirit, whatever you want to call it, goes right. I'm it. You're ready for the next phase. So enter January, beginning of this year, and I lose my job. But I don't lose my job because of anything I've done. I lose my job in the biggest liquidation of a company in the UK that I was working for at the time. It's the biggest one they've ever seen. So I, I don't lose my job in any old way. I lose my job in a spectacular way, right? And this is, another, again, another sign for me, one that I was thinking I, I was ready for it at that time because I saw it coming. But I was almost like, hang on, what does that mean? Like, what is that all about? It's not coincidence. I'm big liquid around me at the time that I was. Um, at the same time, I had been seeing somebody as well, um, and that stopped on the same exactly the same day that I the company was called into liquidation. So I don't believe in coincidence, as you well know. No, I was just going to say, by the way, that's not coincidence. When a pattern starts or stops, if anything involved in that pattern, it's like end. Yeah. For that consciousness. Yeah. It's literally a consciousness end. That programming end, and then everything in your life, especially. Yes. Yes. And really, I have to go back to how I defined myself at the start of this journey with you. I I don't know what I can't remember what I said in the podcast, but let me just kind of summarize. Very business orientated, very much, you know, my identity was business. My identity, my work was the thing that I wanted to excel at or wanted to show the world I excelled at. But behind those scenes, I was felt like, felt like, I had no confidence. I felt I, I don't, you know, I felt like somebody's going to find me out. I felt not happy. I felt like I had a persona for business, for the, my 
friends for different friends i had persona with family i had a persona in just general and it all changed and you know what i look back and now i don't even know how the end had had the energy to even do any of those personas all at the same time what a waste of time but that's what was my life my life was about and my identity was amit as a you know head of MA or head of mergers and acquisitions i identified myself in the business space isn't that how most people they well, escape their personal lives and they try to make a success in their uh, in their uh, in their business life. Well, yeah. To try to get away from their bit, personal life, and then it bites them in the ass. A hundred percent. And I wanted to point that out because I, you know, I have been all these events with a lot of these events with you, and I have heard of stories of how people have gone through, and there's some extreme horrible stories that people go through to get to see you, right? And it's heart wrenching, and it's really, really bad, but. I'm actually, you know, I think majority of people feel like I did, you know, pretender in the world. I'm not good enough. Uh, you know, they don't have to have had like an extreme life to want to get better in life. So like, that's how I felt. I was like, oh, but everybody sees me that way, but I'm not, I'm really awful. I don't know anything. No one gets it. I'm going to get found out. You know, they're all going to find it out. I can't speak my truth. I don't know what that is. You know, I had all these things going on. No wonder I was tired every night. I was like, coming home going, oh my God, I just wanted this to stop. So that's, so fast forward to January. I was in a very different place even in January. I was like, oh, well, this big thing's just happened to me, but I feel all right. I'm, I know there's something's going on here and I'm just going to wait it out. Um, I think there was still a little bit of ego there. I think actually I was thinking, oh, well, this is all right. Something better is going to come, right? My higher consciousness obviously knew that, said, okay, right, if you think that way, well, we'll, we'll, we'll lead you down that garden path. We'll let you think that, and we're going to break this ego one for all. And it did. And so this year has been all about learning lessons for me and getting even stronger. And really, the key thing for me is speaking my truth in the moment, anytime, uh, without ego, without any kind of thought about, you know, oh, what about this? What about that? Just speaking my truth, if it's about me and it's pure about me, I can't impact anyone negatively, right? And I shouldn't be thinking that way anyway. And this this has been my lesson this year. And it is the kind of final stretch of kind of taking out every last echo. Because at the beginning of this year, I was like, okay. And I remember speaking, yeah, fine, won't it? Everything's going to be okay. And I'm saying a little element of ego. I don't think it was a big one. It was just, okay. And this year, you know, for a person who defined himself business-wise, right? I was out of a job until August, which is a long time. For me. I've never been out of a job. I've always been in a job. The job was the thing. The career was the big thing for me to kind of take forward in life. But every time, I was, it was strange. Every time I went for it either got taken away as a position or it was delayed to the hilt. And I had like six positions that I was offered a place that either I it got taken away or it was delayed. Uh, again, I don't believe in coincidence. That is definitely something for me, and I had to learn. But I learned so much during that so much, so many periods of down and up. And the end result, June, July, was about me holding on to the last bit of old life that I had. What I mean by that is I wouldn't let go of something that I the last last bit that I had of my old self because it almost was a second game for me. It was almost like, but what would I do if I don't have that? Who would I be? Um and I got I had to get myself out of that funk. And as soon as it did, I got the job that I wanted. So let me explain what happened there. So for you, again, you really want to clean up at a deeper level. So you want to get everything out all at one time. Yes. So, so with that being said, so you know, if you say that you had the ego, right? You got a job, you got finances, you got, say, success or abundance again. If you still have distortions in you, the abundance that you have will just get magnified again. And then, well, you're not building on a strong foundation, right? Yeah. Again, for those individuals who want to build a solid, strong foundation without any distortion, Everything must go. Everything, it's just like a bulldozer. Everything must be cleared out. Everything must be leveled on solid, firm ground. 
And then if you've noticed when you were there, you didn't much care about a job. You knew that. So you knew that security actually shifted from, I have to find a job. Where am I going to get money? Where am I going to live into, into like a security that goes, I'm going to be okay. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes. Without a job, without knowing what's going to happen next or without, you know, you might lose your you know place to live or whatever it is. Uh, it's like, I'm going to be okay. Yes. There's a deeper knowing that I'm going to be okay. Yes. You know what I mean? It's just like so solid. And that's the foundation that I'm talking about. It's not like, Oh, Moss told me. And that's why I don't tell people everything because if I tell you it like defeats the purpose. Cause if I go, Oh, don't worry, you're going to be okay. Like, and most people go, well, am I going to be okay? It's like, well, you know, I kind of skirt the issue yeah. because if I said it, then it kind of ruins the end of the movie for you, yes. doesn't it? hundred percent. And it ruins your learning growth. Agreed. Right. And I change it. I found that I change it. Yeah, that's another thing. That's the other thing I do. Say something, I change it myself. Yes. So when I say something and if it's for you, not your benefit, you would change it or your spirit will change it. It's like, oh, shit. It's so awkward. <laughs> You know, and it's like, oh, well, he didn't learn his lesson. Let's do it this way. It's all about, say, not really learning your lesson, but ascending to a higher level where, again, you become solid. And it's like, okay, I learned my lesson. I'm at the solid level. Then I can move on. Yes. That's the content. So, uh, like you said earlier, I might say something that you might get mad at or might be off, but the end, that's what you got to focus on. It's like, Okay, did you get the end result once everything settled down, right? Yes. What did I have to say to get you directed towards that goal? So now that you've got a solid purpose, so tell us what happened after that. Oh, well, so one of the one of the learnings for me during that period was how I was really coming into what I call manifesting my own life, effectively, which is effect which is the aim of this, right? The ascendance, the manifestation comes with it. I, it's what you say. You come here with abundance, but then we get it. We take it away during a pattern that we go through in life, and then we get it back, right? By doing this ascendance, right? So now it was about manifesting. Now it's like a new. To- it's an, or in a way about a new toy that you have to be careful with, right? It's one of those warning signs sometimes that you get on toys, you know, for age three and over, for age five and over, in a way, because what happened was whatever you think comes true. Whatever you want in a particular moment, say feeling behind it, it comes true, good or bad. And that's what I was, that's what I really realized this year was I already had those manifesting capabilities all this year. And I actually manifested what happened this year. I manifested the the times when I felt awful. Well, of course I was going to feel awful because that's what I was thinking and that's how I had the energy behind it. It wasn't that it was, you know, it was another lesson for me and it was spirit teaching me lesson. No, no, I've asked for it here. I'm like, oh, no, I want to feel like this. I'm going to feel like this. Well, yes, I'm going to feel like that. Damn it. It's going to be awful. And that was the thing I was holding on to with this whole feeling of wanting to have that feeling of being hard done by or victim or whatever. And that... Let me just clarify. Yes. <laughs> Before you get to the next. So people go, well, it, it, so basically what he's saying is like, you are what you think or your reality. That's not really true. So I just want to clarify that because this is very different, although it looks or feels the same, right? Because you go, I think it, and then it creates it. And that's really true. And this is where successful individuals who go, well, you just set a goal and then it shows up. And then Mm -hmm. what tons of business people or whoever, they set a goal or write down goals and go, well, why the hell didn't it show up, right? So what happened is that what happens is that the underlying, say, machinery or mechanism Mm. is not, say, installed. That app is not installed to most individuals, right? In successful people, they don't realize what it really is because they just see the logical or physical thing that people do, right? I'm going to set a goal, right? They don't know the mechanisms underneath on why that goal comes true. So basically through EI, what I did and what you, you know, what you got into is like, oh, I'm a, I'm a materialization mechanism, yes. right? So you install that, say, software in your system, and now when you start thinking of something, it literally starts to materialize whether you have intention or not. Yes. Does that make sense? That makes total sense. So that's why goals don't come true, although it comes true for successful individuals. That's that missing component that almost every successful individual, no matter how many books you read on success, 
no matter how many books you read on goal setting, they don't tell you that because right. they don't know. It's already yeah. like preset in there for you to. And, 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 and it's that, when I say feeling, it's that how absolute powerful emotion that you have to want to do that. Because right. there, peop- there are goals that people set that they don't really want. They just feel like other people need them to do that and they right. don't have the right intention behind it. Yeah, and so that, that's right the way. congruency between. So you get to the level where initially, and I just want to clarify this too, is you get to the level where initially your spirit literally takes over you because mm. you don't know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. It's just like... I'm just going to take your hand and just guide you to the shortest path possible yes. to, you know, be of yourself. That's what you wanted. Yes. So your spirit takes over. And most individuals don't like that because they have no control over their life. Yes. I mean, literally no control over their life. Whatever happens, is happening. They can't be guided by their emotion. Nothing can be, well, nothing can happen the way they think. Yes. That's how much control they lose. Even their bodily functions sometimes, you know, they get ill and so on. So once, again, once you get into the right path, then you start to merge together. So your conscious mind can communicate with your spirit mind. It's like, ah, now you're learning. Now you get to do, or now you get to know how to, say, materialize now, right? It's a two-part system. Let's work together. And this is where you start to, well, uh, have a conversation with your spirit. Exactly. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. And that's that's the bit I was learning because I had, I thought, well, what am I learning by doing all of this and what I hadn't realized was no I'm asking my spirit and we're doing it together and it just so happens to be what I would call not great experiences not experiences I need to go through and that I was holding on to something and once I realized that and put attention and awareness on it suddenly it went because I don't need that so I remember when I did that it was July the 28th and I had been, I have to say, there was a particular company that I really wanted to work for. And I was holding out for this company. So I might have had six offers, but it was this company that was delayed that I was waiting on. Mm-hmm. And I knew I was, I had this thing about manifesting where I would go, and it's a bit more like your goals. I would say, this is my goal. This is my outcome. Mm-hmm. And whereas I should have just said, I want that and better. Go and do, you know, help. Let's, let's just do this. No, no, because I'm me. I would go, this is what I want, and this is the outcome. And it has to happen this way. I want this step, that step, this step, that step, this step, that step, and I want to get there. Well, that was happening for me, but for that to happen in this life, you know, it takes a bit of a while to get there, right? Because mm-hmm. ha- I've asked for several steps to get there. Whereas what I realized, and I realized in that moment in July, was actually all I need to say is, I want this. Right? I want a job with this energy around it, with the role like this, using all my capabilities and having everything I ever wanted and being absolutely happy, great package, whatever it is. That's what I want. Go and give it more or something better. Better. Go and give it to me. I want it the quickest way possible in the best way possible. Whatever you do, just give it to me. So that was July the 29th. I got an offer from the company on August the 4th, 5th it was. And I started working for the end of August. And that's no word of a lie because it was already there. I just had to, I just had to manifest it properly the way, you know, it was already lined up for me. I had lined it up a long time ago. Um, and I realized that. And once I knew that, so this is, I've gone, I just want to kind of go back to the title of this podcast for you. Um, obviously not for me. Um, so we've gone from you guiding me at the beginning, me feeling yummy to then me being in a real state of going, help me, save me somebody help me and you're going no you're responsible now you yeah. you you've got to grow up and that's what i needed so there's responsibility all this year has been about responsibility and in came power and the power is pure because the power comes from no i know who i am i know what i can do i have to be careful but i don't because i'm already in that stage where right. now i am responsible i have grown up and so i don't need to be careful in that way mm-hmm. in terms of oh i've got to think this and that and the other now i understand it then i can manifest it but it has to happen that way because otherwise it's not pure it's not right and to be honest your spirit won't give you it in any other way because you've no. got to have responsibility before you can get the power because the power can end up being somewhere different and that's what i where i would have been in february had i had that power given to me then i was given a little bit of power and it went ego driven in a way and i recognize that now and i've got i've got no qualms about saying it now and this is where i am now they are absolutely completely different very much speaking my truth don't 
really care about looking back and saying what really happened about me personally. I have no attachment to it because it, it is the most challenging, intense, beautiful, awe-inspiring journey, but really, really painful. But I wouldn't have it any other way because now I, I am where I am now. Now, is every day amazing, beautiful, wonderful, glorious? No, but can it be? Yeah, it's in my, it's in my whole, whole of my gift to do it. You know, if I have to catch myself each day, then why am I having a uh, not so good day? Oh, no, because I didn't ask for a good day this morning or I asked for an awful day this morning because I woke up that way. And as soon as I put awareness to it, it goes better day. And that is how my life is now. It's amazing. So you're still in a learning experience. So it's teaching you like... And again, it goes back to, yes, what you think is what you create. But again, the mechanism, the underlying mechanism to actually say create it. Yes. Most people don't have that mechanism. That's why it doesn't work that way. So now that you have it, it teaches you that, well, thoughts are things. Yes. Thoughts create things. And then for you also is that you don't have to go like every little step. Like so in business sense. Right? Yeah. It's like we want to have this end product. We have to do X. We have to do Y. We have to do all these steps. And yes, you do have to do all these steps, but you don't have to formulate them yourself. Correct. You exactly. It's a higher order. It's like, okay, this is what we want. This is the end result. If you settle in like yes. a business like partner or group, if you just settle in and just wait all the all the ideas, the concepts, the the time frame, yes. the the logistics, all those things start coming to you. They'll yes. start to materialize just naturally. It just like it'll form in your head. This is where this is where inventors. This is where great concepts. They don't go there. It's like Einstein or or, or Thomas Edison or whoever those great inventors. They didn't go. Oh, I have to do this. I have to do this. What do they do? Mm-hmm. It's like oh, this idea comes up. Like you know, do I don't know light up the city what do you do and then it's like the concept of the light bulb comes through the wherewithal the mechanisms and all that's needed yeah. to create say a, a fluorescent light bulb or whatever you know an incandescent light bulb just shows up for you like, yes there's still work you still have to do the work to get it together put it together and all that but the steps start to materialize and then also the power to create them. yes so say if you don't have money Yes. And you come up with, say, a brilliant idea. If you create it from this step, the money, the partners, everything else will show up like it has for many people in history. Yes. And and I always used to think I wanted to know what's going to happen. So that's why I asked the question that I did. But actually, what's the fun? And it comes back to what you said before. What's the fun in that? Well, if I go, I want that outcome or better, and I don't know the steps to get there, that's the fun in it. That's the that's fun, the fun in it. It's like watching it or a spy observing everything that happens and going isn't this such an amazing place that that is how it happened Mm -hmm. like such a strange and wonderful way that i would never have been because my mind can only go so far right i don't know the all of the ways of the world of how it could work so how how arrogant of me to go and these are the steps that it could happen but actually i want to have an amazing like experience in this world and that's how i'm doing it i can get my outcome i let go of control because i don't have it in that respect and then, and then I see how it all unfolds, and I'm like, ha, ha, ha. and it's all sort of like a laughing, smiling with myself, going, "This is how you're doing this. This is quite, quite and you interesting." Notice it's always better than what you. Of said. course it is, and and I'm changing always it as I go better. along. I'm, I'm, you know, oh, I said that outcome, but actually, I want this as well. Okay, fine. Well, we'll add that spice in the pot. Okay, I want this as too. In fact, why can't I have that? Because of my mind's expanding all better. I always say all better. All better. And and in work, what's come out is my natural ability. So the big thing for me. Oh, wait, wait. Sorry. So let me stop. I like to. I like to talk. So, no, no, no. I love it. So what was I going to say now? Yeah, there you um, go. There's my pattern interrupt. So this is the. No, this is so cool. So I really like this because, again, um, business people they want to know all the steps. You know, they mm. and then what happens is like, okay, mm. we got to meet this deadline if we want to do the next step. We got to meet this deadline if. And I'm not saying don't set deadlines or anything, but. Deadlines should be created from a higher consciousness, not at a lower consciousness. Your mind was not created for doing with, uh, you know, planning. Yes. Right? That comes from a higher order. So you still have deadlines, but it's a more organic yes. say, deadline to create, say, the final product on a certain date or whatever it is. And that certain date is not up to you either. 
again, it's about connecting with your higher source going, what well, can we get it done here or here or, you know, what date? And then you get that date. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. So, and then for most business individuals, when you create like forcing your way through, right, to get a product, say, into place or a service or anything in business or personal life, the journey becomes tedious. Yes. You know what I mean? It becomes like you have to, like you get so so anxious because you're trying to meet deadlines you know you burn the midnight candle i mean again you do that but it's fun you know you destroy your family you destroy your life you destroy everything to get that project done because that's your end goal right and since you've destroyed everything you get your end goal and go the hell yeah this is what i did this for right i lost everything and now i have this product oh yay yeah yeah, you know, and yeah. it's like it, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's nothing in it. Yeah, there's just nothing because you've lost everything. What, what was the purpose? In this scenario, you know, you have it's like, well, how do I get to this spot? You know, and then you, it's like a concierge service, mm-hmm. right? Your spirit is it creates it, but you know, since it's intermixing with you, it's actually it's like enjoying itself. Yes, being in space time because that's what that's what spirit relishes being in space time so it gives you nice surprises along the way the journey becomes like fantasia for you it becomes euphoric for you because now you're in it yes it's not a grind it's like an excitement yes you know what i mean agreed and you yeah. lead the way and you like, lead the way of course i come back to what i said at the beginning of where i was like i had five different personas right mm-hmm. i don't have any persona now i'm just who i am in any situation and so i'm glad you mentioned business because business is remember how i used to identify myself but now i've gone into this new business the one that i wanted to go into mm-hmm. and and you're absolutely right you Having not been in a job for eight months, doesn't feel like that long, but it, it, it was a long time for me. Mm-hmm. And then going into the workplace after having that growth period, uh, it, it's funny you should say stuff like deadlines because the thing that I restrained myself from doing because that's what I was taught, you know, yep. even by parents, even by family, even by friends, even by society, and and especially in business, it's the hierarchy. Is that you? T- you know, there are some times where you can't speak out, and you just have to take stuff. And if there's a deadline, you should never question it, or whatever it is, right? right. You shouldn't question it. I can't do that anymore. My, I come back to speaking my truth, right? Mm-hmm. If I see something, and I like going. Well, in the past, I would know that this wasn't the right thing to do, but I wouldn't speak out my truth. And I wouldn't say it in the moment, right? I can't, I basically can't do it anymore. I would literally say in the moment, okay, so why we have that deadline? Okay, what is that purpose for? Why do we need to do it? Should we just cut through it? We need to do it that way. And then literally I see in the moment, in these boardrooms, in these, even the boardroom, like even senior people, mm-hmm. like I have no fear just to say, why are we spending two hours on talking about something that we can, we all know the conclusion of because we've already said it at the beginning, right? So why can't we just get straight there? I will say that now. And it sounds quite abrupt, but do you know what? People in that room go, I was thinking the same thing. Oh God, you know, because I used to go into those meeting rooms and I used to say, this doesn't, what, am I in a different space of reality? Is it, you know, can they not see what I see? Right. And then I used to come out afterwards and then it used to end up the way that I thought it would, i.e. not right in the right most place. Employees or most people are and right I used to right. regret it. I used to go, I wish I'd said something in that moment. I wish I'd just spoken out. Well, I don't regret anything. I haven't regretted anything all this year, for sure. And I literally, you know, I have people looking at me going, have you just said this? And I was like, yeah, just said that. Is it right? Yes. These are people more senior than me, but that is the the confidence, the self-esteem. But most, I just say it's speaking my truth. It's It's that innate gift as well that I've been... But it's Given. not cockiness. It's not evil. no, no. You know, when you speak it, you're just like a child, just saying the truth. And even like senior executives and so on, if you know they they look at and at first they might like get offended, but then later on, they see they see that you're telling like, oh my God, he's right. He, yeah, he just saved us. Yeah, you know, a couple million dollars by saying that. You know, he had the balls to say it. Yeah, and it's like, oh wow, I respect the guy. Yeah, you know, that's how you get real respect. And I change the way I say it but I still say it like it, depending on who I'm with I might be very cutthroat about it or I might be very but you know I might say it in a different way right. but I still say it and that is the key thing for me and that's where like kind of 
I've seen the company I work for even shift while I've been there. Yeah. And and it's very innately done. Like it's almost like, well, kind of hang hang on. I'm seeing that. I'm seeing this stuff. I'm seeing all this stuff over there. Why are you doing all this? Why are you wasting time doing it? It's so inefficient, right? I don't, you know, we need to do something different. And I could not have done that had I not gone on my journey beforehand. And I'm a person, I, I'm going to reiterate it, that I identified myself as the business person. My work just find me. Now I just like, no, I'm Amit. And I'm yeah. Amit in any mode, in any situation, be it in business, with friends, with family, whoever it is, on the street, you know, I'm just who I am. And that is so empowering because then I have the energy to do what I need to do in life. So let's talk about power. So back into the boardroom. So when you speak your truth and say you've proven that it works, right? Yeah. You save the company a lot of money or a lot of time because right? that's the two major components. Um, so when you speak your truth, uh, obviously it comes true. So you know how people just clamor for power mm. in companies? Mm -hmm. They lie, yes. they cheat, they try to do projects, they backbite and stuff like that. You don't have to do anything. You know, because no. people literally see that you lied and you cheated and you're a jerk and you know what I mean? You slept yeah. with so-and-so or you did this, whatever, whatever. What boardroom have you been in? Yeah. Boardroom, bedroom, whatever. Well, look at Harvey Weinstein, you know? No, no you've been in the same boardrooms yeah. if I have. Don't worry about yeah. it. Like I said, look at Harvey Weinstein or Weinstein, whatever, right? What do they have to do? Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that. So you don't have to sell yourself. You know, you don't have to sell your soul to get to the top. You, know, you just say what it is. It's so solid. People respect you, even people who, you know, are higher up because they want, well, bottom line, save money, yeah. save time. And they go, that guy. Yes. Yeah. And then that's where you get, say, the respect, the honor out of everybody because you're not cutting anybody down. You're just telling it what it is. Yes. You're just telling what everybody else thinks. Right. But that's that. That's the pure power that's that comes power. out. That's what there's the, no ego involved. There's and no nobody ego. gets hurt, and that's why it's so important when you know when you're talking about business is the really the real real asset in it mm -hmm. is to work on yourself and make sure because because you're absolutely right. I'll tell you the some the the biggest thing I've noticed is when I do speak my truth. I don't get challenged on it, not because, oh, I'm right or wrong. It's not like that. It's because I have this sense of congruency, congruency self-esteem, very much the confidence-based, just probably confident, but it's the power. It's the pure power. I'm speaking my truth. So, of course, it's going to resonate out like that. And people will go, okay, well, I would normally, I've been in the boardroom, and then people will go, I'd normally want to have a go at you because that's the way I am, and that, I don't, I'm insecure, and I don't want to lose this battle. But I can't because I just can't. Because everybody knows it's the truth. Yeah. I've just spoken out my truth, which is also their truth in a of way. Course. If it's, you know, if it's dealing with a product or service, everybody knows the way it should be. Yes. N nobody says, says it the way it should no. be. No. And that's where my, my, my personal gifts come into play. Because the other thing is I just to have that awareness and knowing and it comes out and it comes out through my mouth, uh, you know, like it is now. Um, but effectively that is, you know, the reason why I want to say I keep coming back to, I had four different facades and now I don't have any mm -hmm. is because even in business, people can't try and segregate business, oh, personal friends, family there's a difference between separation and segregation and there's and there's a difference between that and boundaries mm -hmm. i understand having boundaries in business and boundaries and friendships and whatever that's fine but to have that illusion that nothing spills over into other thing is ridiculous i mean i'll give you an example i went to a meeting i think i told you about this before um with a guy and uh, we were going to do a deal together and i picked up that I hadn't met him before. He hasn't spoken to me. I just picked up that he was in a very bad mood and it had something to do with home life. Not because, you know, I'd spoken to him or I'd asked him anything. I just picked up there was something like that. And I knew it was going to affect my meeting with him. And, you know, when you go in a meeting with somebody in a business room, people don't even think about that. They don't think about what happened during that day or that evening or that week with that person that you're dealing with. with yeah, of course. Whatever. So I gave him a story about how I was in a really bad mood that moment because I went on the subway and I was literally, you know, there with people around me and I was having an awful day. And I says, I was really in a bad mood coming into this, but I could bring that into this meeting. Right. But I won't because I have to leave that at the door. We're going to have a business meeting. Right. 
Um, I was literally telling him that story so he would get rid of his. I was like, it's almost like if you had a fight with your wife the night before and that's mm-hmm. hanging over into the meeting room. And he just looked at me and I knew I'd hit the nail on the head. Yeah. And we went back in and we went in this meeting room and we had a great meeting. We we agreed on a deal, but that would not have happened because he would have no. brought his animosity towards his wife in that meeting room. And I'd have to be dealing with that, not right. business, no, not how people, people go, oh, well, it's all separate. You leave personal oh, at no the way. door. How? So that's why it's so important to just be yourself everywhere you go, especially in business. Right. And what he means by just be yourself is not be your facade that you think you are. Yeah, it's too much energy to use that. Because, like, if you said that, be yourself, like, a year ago, that would not be yourself that he's talking about. No. I just want to clarify that. It's like your, your, like, full potential stuff. Agreed. Not the fake facade that. No. So that that's. So I just want to clarify. Uh, I never faked it till I made it. I yeah. I actually just built a facade. People create to, a facade. Yeah, yeah I exactly. built a facade to hide behind. Yeah. So is, that's not being yourself. No, that's not the. And that's not being your weak version. I no. Mean, this is like your real powerful self. That you're talking Which you have to do the right. work to get there. Exactly. Right. So whenever you're talking about business, it's really, for me, it starts because it's my experience. So I can only speak from my experience. Right. It starts with yourself. It starts with being who you truly are right. and then implying it in all areas of your life in the same way. So now in business meetings, I mean, just think of the power that you have because you can read people. Right? Oh yeah. You can see what their weaknesses or what their strengths are, what kind of day they are, what kind of issues they have all those things before you get into the meeting where that's going to affect your meeting. Yes. Right? So how great of a skill is that if you're trying to like, sell your product or service? Agree. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. Because businesses aren't like on logistics of the product or service. Like, do I like this guy? Or yes. This person, right? Yes. That's what it's about. It's all about that. It's all about. And especially it, in the East. And sp- well, yeah, hundred percent. But you shift people around you when shift you're like people, that. Exactly. So you change the business world by being the way you are. Suddenly you're shifting. Well, and then just imagine how far that goes. If you're shifting other people, they're shifting other people. You're shifting every. You know. Well, that's the new business paradigm. Is like, yes, you're exchanging goods and services, but the real reason underneath is that you're you're making that other person like a, a lot better person. Yes. In their personal self. Yes. Right? Which extends on to their family and so on. So that's what you're talking about. So so that exchange of business, yes, it's an exchange of business, but you know, when you can help people at a deep level, I don't want to say they're indebted to you, but they look at you as like, gosh, that guy really helped me. Yeah. Right? I'm gonna do business with him again. Right? Yeah. Rather than, oh yeah, I did business with him, but that guy was just a jerk. You know, yes. I'm gonna we're gonna try to backstab him later on or whatever. Yeah. I don't want to do business like that anymore. Right? Yeah. That's the long term business that businesses are looking for great right that long-term connections like god that really helped me that guy really helped me with my wife i'm sure that you yeah you, you helped that guy yeah right with his personal stuff it's like wow yeah i i, I totally agree and actually that whole um that whole interaction with people and doing that and then furthering themselves and shifting the company in the new business paradigm mm-hmm. it, it just it just shows that it is really powerful because it does literally just then change the environment that you're in. The, it, it gets infused in the product and service that you sell. Exactly. That goes out into the economy. It's a ripple effect. Of I mean, course. it really is. It starts at one place, but it ripples out everywhere else. You know, if you think that it infuses in the product or service that you get into the world, you know, and if it's a big product, if you did it in like a big company like Microsoft or, mm-hmm. you know, Apple or something like that, and you abused it in their products, can you imagine how, well, you could, but of like course. generally, can you imagine how that infuses in the whole, and that's, of course. And that's the business That's why paradigm. people bought Apple products when Steve Jobs was around. Yes. You know what I mean? Is that identity, that persona that when you held that phone, yes. Like, God, I'm holding part of like an essence of like Steve Jobs, you know, not in a morbid way. No. But you know, that creativity, that ingenuity, everybody wanted to be part of that company. Yes. Because of Steve Jobs. You know, I haven't seen any great products come out of that since, company, by the way, after he left. Since so he that's left. how much of an impact. Right. Agreed. So, yeah. So that's what you're sending out through your products and services. Now that's the new business paradigm that you're sending out. It's like when people like try your product or service, it's like, gosh, this product or service feels good because there's no animosity 
in say the making of that product or service. There's no distortion. There's no like negative employees. Those employees are happy to work yes. like, in that space because well, the, the the CEOs and all that they're happy. They're complete, right? They're not trying to prove anything to anybody. They don't. They're not running around. I can't say that, but. Uh, they don't have their ego. <laughs> we'll say that they have their ego, say, in a proper setting. Yes. Right? Uh, again, they're not cocky uh, or anything like that. They're just solid. They're confident men. Yes. You see that a lot of CEOs, they might have the title, they might have the money, but I'm not impressed with a lot of them because you see them and they're just weak and they're just like, they have this facade that they hide behind. Insecure. Right? It's very insecure yeah. and it's not very attractive. Yeah, especially to their spouses because they want a solid man. Yes, right? yes. So that goes into the, from the bedroom, goes into the boardroom where they yes. have to prove something. And then, you know, it's just like weak, yes. weakness, weak products, weak services, weak employees, weak company. Yes. Makes sense. Weak, and then it goes into the economy and other people and effects. The company I worked for at the beginning of this year, the one that went to liquidation, it was listed. Um uh, that was a textbook case of market failure and textbook case of the executives causing that to fall for their own personal gale. So yeah, whole of them. And it was caused by insecurities and, you know, hiding things and fraud and all of those textbook market failure. If you were doing an MBA, it would be on this company to do it that way. Right. And people would go, well, uh, you know, bad inventory or they did this wrong or whatever it was, but Again, yeah, it's but that's the psyche of the people running exactly. Place. But that's what you're saying there about all of that going yes. into the market having that negative effect. But I always feel like, well, there was a real reason why I was part of that, mm -hmm. and now I'm a there's a reason why I've seen I'm in the different business paradigm because I've seen the other extreme mm -hmm. and I've lived through it, and it was horrible. Actually, it was part actually why I was having these near deaths. I was at that company, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all it's all, all poetically it. right, course. isn't it? That yeah. I went through that awful experience in the awful company, in an awful environment, mm -hmm. do it, you know, led by people who are insecure. And then suddenly, you know, I have this period of time where I'm working through stuff and then I'm into this other genre and, you know, I'm manifesting as I go. And, and that ha happens in business mostly because that's where I spend a lot of my time. Um, so, so in the short time that you've been with this company, I can tell that you're literally like a powerhouse like everybody understands you. Yes. Does that make sense? It, so you're yes. really making like solid positive waves within that company. Yes. You know, with the higher ups. It's like, wow, who is this guy? Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it, again, it's not just, you know, the 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 the, the ingenuity of whatever you do. Like yes. The business. But it's like the people. Yes. They just want to gravitate towards you. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And you, and I can see it like it's almost I'm observing it while it happens yeah. and I can see my energy in the place. I can see the light, the, the kind of bright, shining bright in, mm -hmm. on that area and making things happen. That gives me even more, you know, I don't need it like to, but to speak out on what I see all of the time because that's kind of very key. That's I come back to speaking your truth because that's the only right. way I can I can actually get it across as what, what it is. And right. if you've ever had a feeling of regretting anything in your life, it's because you didn't say something or you didn't do something in a certain right. period of time. And I've or I've never wanted to do that because I've had a lifetime of regrets. Mm -hmm. I just haven't been in that mode, and that's because I do what I need to do in that moment. But you can't get to that stage unless you've cleaned yourself out you're in that pure mode and you absolutely know beyond you don't even need to think about it whatever you think and whatever you say in that moment isn't going to be detrimental to anyone else around you it's going to be your it's truth win -win for everyone. exactly nobody, nobody has to lose nobody has nobody to lose um, it's it, I just feel I, I'm trying to remember how I actually felt in February um and all I can all I can feel is a bit naive, uh, not because not because I was necessarily naive. I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. right exactly. uh, I didn't know. I certainly didn't know what was to come. Um, and I really liked what I was feeling at that time. And you're right. It gave me, you know, what got me, gave me the strength to get through what I had to get through was knowing where I could get to, which is exactly where my highest conscious, higher consciousness went. And the I've gone from identifying myself in a business setting to now just identifying myself as me, exactly. whatever I really am. And yeah. my business setting is as powerful as ever, yeah. as ever it would ever, it would never be this powerful in my old kind of life. Um, and your personal life is not 
you don't have to like, destroy your personal life or your health. Right? No, yes. You can have it all. You can literally have it all. You can enjoy what you are, say, sowing. Well, yeah. And reap the benefits. Well, yeah. Again, without destroying. 100%. Well, because I don't think of anything as separate. Well, my personal life is also been business life, isn't it? So then suddenly all my friends are, well, I don't have to separate my business friends from my other friends because they're all friends. Right. And if I meet someone at work, well, isn't that personal life too? Cool. So so now suddenly haven't I just opened so many doors in life by just sep- not separating out any right. part of my life? And that means not separating me either. And that's... That's you don't have multiple co- identities. No, well, you don't I have to go. What did I no, say skit, to this so. <laughs> What did I have to say to this person? Yeah, who was I? And and what exactly. facade did I give them? And what impression do I have to give them? I actually, no. I'm like just because I'm open to everything in any environment, and I'm always myself. It as you defined it before. Mm-hmm. Well, then isn't the possibilities of having that personal life even more possible? Isn't the possibilities of oh, having the richer. friends? Yeah, hundred percent. Whereas before, I didn't see it that way. I, I felt like everybody else. Well, most other people feel, oh, no, I have to separate all these. I have to be different people to different people. Exactly. And I have to show a different side of myself. To, I, I can't be vulnerable this in this one. I have to do this to keep my job. Yeah. I have to do this to keep my wife. Yes. I have to be this way to, you know, appease whoever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you don't. No. I just have it's to just be you and you're me. solid. 100%. Right. Uh, that's the key thing. So that's where the power comes in. Mm-hmm. And the responsibility came before. I had to learn to be responsible before I got I got given the power fully. Right. You know, what's interesting is that more and more CEOs are gravitating towards, you know, exponential intelligence. I work with them and they go, I can't believe all the years that I thought what, you know, I had to just like lose everything, lose my health, lose everything mm. to become successful. Mm. I didn't know it was, say, that fascinating and it was so much fun yes. in the new paradigm. Yes. Right? Yes. And That's it is. the key. It's like you get fun. You, you have fun. You become abundant. Uh, you have a jolly time, a great time, an yes. adventure. It's yes. like building your business or creating a business. Yes. Without losing your identity, without destroying yourself. Yes. 100%. And, 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 the, and the consciousness or the ideas just naturally come to you. Yes. I mean, there still is work, but you enjoy the work. Yes. Right. Uh, I just, you know, I think it's quite important for peop- people who are listening to this, who are in the business world, corporate or otherwise, you know, if you have ever been, which I'm sure most of them have, were well, watching their back, you know, putting, the, you know, being a pretender, you know, thinking they're going to get found out, you know, trying to compete with everyone or being competed with, you know, don't have a voice, you know, don't feel appreciated. All of those people, they, that, that gets eradicated because yeah. it comes back to what we just said yeah, before, yeah. back to, you know, have you done the work to get to who you truly are, to get to that responsibility, to get to the power? Because all of that, it doesn't even come into your mind. You know, the first time you do and go into that workplace, there is a little bit of nervousness because you realize that uh, this is a bit I miss. You realize you are different. And you realize things have changed and you don't know how that's going to actually play out. Mm-hmm. And then once you get into it, you're like, well, I, I rather enjoy this. I am happy, but I'm not happy because I've just like had five minutes of happiness. I am truly, deeply, honestly happy at every part that I'm doing. But that all goes, all of those, you know, you wake up on Monday morning, you have to go to work and you think about all the things that you don't want to go to work for because it's about, you know, that person said this and I'm going to see that person and they're going to bitch about me and they're going to do this and they're going to do that. And I've got to go into that meeting and I haven't prepared for it and I don't know what to say and, that, you know, my boss is going to have a go at me. All of those things that everybody, lots of people have on a Monday morning, they just go because it's because you create your own life at work and you create your own life elsewhere. And that's the key thing. I, I, I really need to needed to say productive. that as well you're efficient hours. you're so efficient you do like 40 50 60 hours of work in a well in a very i know i don't tell life. work that though okay. <laughs> i still think it takes say it takes a lot the same amount of time because what you know while they're getting efficient i'm getting okay. efficient <laughs> i can get to do other things in my life right i, I did say business and personal and everything yeah, else was all of one so you know they're they're still paying catch-up so you know whereas it you know 40 50 hours of work might take 10 hours for me yeah. you know i might say it takes to them 35 hours which is still faster than what they're doing because i still want to have my life too 
this is about me being happy as well but they're not losing out because they're getting all the work done too and in more. a more efficient way right exactly. and that and also other things are happening you know you've got to make this work for yourself so um yeah 100 percent agree i always have that now it allows me to ascend even more mm-hmm. because you know i still have a little bit of detox here and there sometimes oh let's just talk about the detox before we end so nowadays it's not like detox right like today you came over yeah and it's like oh i see this pattern that's happening yeah right you notice it and it literally falls off agreed right? it, it's not like a painful de- no. so my label for detox has changed now it's to cook it, before it was what i said before it was you know that whole oh my god i can't have any energy and all of this it's quite painful now it's almost like oh and it, mm, something going on here what is it oh i've got to put awareness on it now i know what it is all right it's some form of this right and then it goes and it's quite instant like it was today it's like course correction yeah it's like oh i'm off the mark here it's like oh i'm, I'm want to go this way but i'm like i'm veered towards the edge here yeah oh course correct yes this is like turning your steering wheel yes it's not like oh damn i have to turn my steering wheel why do i have to turn my <laughs> yeah steering exactly wheel? save you me save I mean? me yeah. um it's like i'm just gonna turn my steering wheel exactly and it's over with the it's, drama is over with and you're you're there it's not really detox it's not detox it's I, I, course correct it's course correction yeah. it's I, I think we should call it at your level and as people get it you know yes call it course correction course correction detox now for me is like kind of that whole i'm not having any food and i'm just gonna have water for 15, 48 hours <laughs> it's more physical now yeah, than it is from now. a spiritual perspective <laughs> i thought i don't know well, wonderful i mean again it was an awesome awesome experience with you here it's so glad to see you again here in Oslo. thank you um a lot of good nuggets i think not just for business but for the personal life yes again isn't it all the same? It's all the same. That one person, right? It is. Uh, so very beautiful. Hopefully this helps uh, everybody that listens. And thank you so much. Thank you as well. Thank Thanks you. for everything over the last two and a bit years. Oh, thank you. So welcome. For more information on my programs, please visit masajadi.com. That's M-A-S-S-A-J-A-D-Y.com.